Hey, Facebook peeps. Okay, so I'm gonna do something interesting. It's, I, I can't believe it's been nearly two years since my debut novel came out. And so, because I've been doing these video clips, I thought I would do a little video clip from my very first book, uh, Love Forever, Live Forever, that I wrote. And um, I'm gonna put on the nerd glasses because it's teeny tiny print and I can't quite see it. So, here we go. Um, I'm gonna start with the prologue. And um, this book is really about first loves and the loss of first loves. It had been five years since I'd seen her, yet there she was standing in front of me. My Sarah, how my heart ached for her. She was my first, first kiss, first date, first lover, my everything. I'm with Annie now, sweet Annie, who has shown me such love and passion that I know she is who I want to spend eternity with, forever wrapped in her arms. Yes, I can still feel the pull of Sarah, and seeing her again only intensifies those feelings. I feel Annie squeezing my hand, and I know she's telling me that it's all right, that she is with me. I suspect Annie knows there's a story here, but to her credit, she won't ask me anything, not now, nor later when we're alone. She'll tell me, she'll let me tell my story in my own time. God, I love that about her. I love everything about her. She is my soulmate. How did I come to this? How did I, did my small town farm girl world bring me to the stage in my life, to this abyss, which I'm now standing over so precariously? To understand, I will have to tell you, the reader, the story of my life up until this very moment. I'm not much of a linear thinker, and I ramble quite a bit, so forgive me for my need to add running commentary here and there. I'm 18 years old, and just starting college when my story begins. Okay, chapter one. It's the summer of 1998 and it's unseasonably hot for late August in Seattle. I'm sweating so bad that I have big armpit stains on my tank top as I scrutinize the old brick building. Students are bustling about resembling ants in front of an anthill. The old brick building is their anthill. My dad is pulling books and CDs out of the back of the Honda. My mom is squinting in the sunshine, politely taking it all in, and I can tell that she doesn't like what she sees. The building is old, the rooms are small, and there is a decidedly musty smell to the place. Mercer Hall appears to be the oldest, most round dormitory that the University of Washington offers to their freshman students. Of course, they assign that dorm to me, I'm a reluctant student, but I'm not really given an option. All the Jorgensen girls will go to college whether they want to or not. Getting a full ride scholarship surely doesn't help my cause. Dad doesn't see the humor in blowing off my scholarship and traveling around Europe until I can see myself as a college student. I don't give the building much thought one way or another. My attention is hijacked as soon as I glance down the hall and notice the hot redhead casually leaning against the wall. My parents don't know about my preference for women. The redhead catches me staring and winks. I'm not sure who she's winking at, so I turn my head around looking for who this hottie can be winking at. There is no one else in the hallway and I start blushing as I realize the wink is intended for me. I can't let my parents see me staring, so I look away and focus on my family who are all loaded up with my belongings as they, as they enter the narrow hallway. Hey, Nikki, which room is yours? This junk is heavy, my sister calls out to me. Don't get your panties in a bunch. It's right here, room 210. Who asked you to come here anyway? I act like I don't want my sister here seeing me off to college, but really I do. My younger sister, Tess, is my best friend. We're only one year apart in age, and we always hang out together. I'm really going to miss her, but I can't admit that to her. Nikki, be nice. You know you're going to miss Tess, so stop acting like you're all tough. For some reason, my mom feels compelled to point this out. Well, this building certainly has a certain amount of old world charm, my dad, the eternal optimist, remarks. You've got to be shitting me. This is the oldest dorm on campus, and it's not some historical landmark, dad. It's just old and worn down. I can't help being a little snarky. Remember, I want to travel the world, 
not live in some old musty building with a bunch of silly freshman girls who are looking to find some hot guy to shack up with. For such an intelligent young woman, you sure find it hard to resist using profanity. Really, Nikki, I thought we taught you better than that. My mom seems to forget her colorful language when she's pissed at my dad. I just want them all to drop my shit off and leave me to get settled. I also want to find the red headed hottie. If I'm lucky, she lives in the worn down rat hole I'm about to spend the next year of my life in. You know, the drive back to Oregon is really going to be long if you don't head back pretty soon. I got it from here. Let me just get the last box from the car and you can be on your way. Are you sure you don't need any help setting up your room? My dad wrinkles his forehead and gives me that concerned parent look. And not from you, Dad. You don't know a Phillips from a flathead screwdriver. And don't even get me started on your propensity to smash your fingers. Or worse, mine. Whenever you wield a hammer. I'm not trying to be mean when I tell my dad this because everyone in my family knows this about my dad. What about dinner? Will you be able to get a chance to eat tonight? Are you sure you don't want us to take you to dinner before we leave? I suspect Mom throws this out there as a final attempt to delay their inevitable departure. It's always about the food for my mom. Mom's way to show love is to ensure we are well fed and it's a miracle I'm not 300 pounds. I barely escape high school with only an extra 10 pounds and I'm a little nervous about what my freshman year will bring. I've heard about the freshman 10 which will make me a disgusting 20 pounds overweight. I've got some granola and other snacks for tonight so really you guys you should head out so you don't get home in a re so you can get home in a reasonable hour. The waterworks begin and my mom predictably starts crying. Oh, all right, I suppose we should get going. I can't believe my baby is in college. I notice that dad is trying not to let it show, but I see a tear escape from his eye. I even see Tess get a little choked up. It's mass hysteria and I catch it from my family. I can't help getting misty eyed too. It isn't my fault that my eyes start watering with the whole damn family starting a crying jamboree. Okay, that's the end of um, my little clip on Love Forever, Live Forever. And it's uh, Throwback Thursday, so hope you all enjoyed it. And see you later. Bye, Facebook peeps.